everybody. Yes, my name is Wayne or Levi, depends on what part of the country you live in. I am a child of God. I'm the elect, also called a saint, a son. I'm pardoned, I'm forgiven, I'm a chosen vessel by God, called into the kingdom for a specific purpose in this last day. And here's some interesting news. So are you. You're all called into the kingdom for a specific purpose. And we're going to talk about that today. Talk about some bad doctrine. We're going to talk about our purpose and how to find our purpose through good doctrine and how to walk in that teaching. Before we do, I want to pray again. Lord God, pour out your spirit upon me. Control my tongue, my heart, my thoughts, my movement, and my body. Just want to surrender to you now. Pour out your anointing, Lord God. Pour out your anointing and your Holy Spirit on the people in this room too, Lord God. Touch their minds, their eyes, and their ears, and their hearts. That they'll receive the truth and be changed and be transformed and be increased in the name of your Son, Jesus. May you get all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. Yes, we're going to talk about some things that I was confused about for a long time and had me in bondage to drugs. And I didn't think there was a way for me to get out of it because of my, the teaching that I had. The teaching that a lot of us have in the Christian world, in the Christian world, the teaching is corrupt and it's keeping people in bondage. And we have to go to Jesus and pray for him to teach us through the anointing. Every single person has a measure of anointing in them. Every single person has a spirit of truth. If you're in Christ, if you surrendered your life to Jesus and you said, Lord, come live in me, make me new. I want help change my life. I repent from the desire to do those things. I repent from the idea of wanting those things, although the flesh still wants those things. See, the idea of repentance is changing your mind about that stuff, even though the body still wants to do that stuff. You don't, that's where the real purity of God starts to change you and develop you. You just got to say, Lord, okay. I don't want that anymore in my mind. I don't want to cuss with profanity anymore in my mind. I don't want to look at the lust in my mind, because I know God doesn't want it. In my heart, I know, and I choose in my mind to turn away from those things. Turn away from those things. And even though it's a struggle, because this body is vile, and its passions must be crucified on a daily basis, by the power of God's grace, we can crucify this thing. And that's what we're going to talk about. That's what we have to understand is, is with God we can do these things. And the teaching that's in the church says that you can't. You can't really walk in victory. You're always going to be a failure. You're always going to be a sinner. And there's nothing you can do about it. That's what the bad doctrine says. The bad teaching that's why so many people can't give up these habits in their lives. They can't let go of these relationships. They can't get out of that bondage. They can't stop gossiping and controlling their tongue. They have no control over their thoughts. They have no control over their emotions. They're constantly in anxiety. They can't break free because they don't believe the word of God. It's got to come in you. It's got to manifest. It's got to produce a new life. Let's talk about that talk about that. The greatest commandments of God, very, very simple, very, very simple. Love God with your whole heart, your whole mind, and your whole soul, and love your neighbor as yourself, and stop sinning. Walk in holiness. And let me tell you, they're connected. The only way you can stop sinning or have a chance to stop sinning is how much do you love God and how much do you want to offer up your life to God and how much do you love your neighbor that you're going to stop sinning and hurting everybody around you? How much do you want 
Got to repent up here. I want to stop sin. See, the idea of repenting, repentance comes from the desire to do what God wants. Not, not really from your efforts as a person to do it, to, to, to make it happen. But it starts with, do you desire to do what God wants? Do you know what he wants? Do you know what he commanded? And do you desire to do that even though it seems impossible? It seems impossible. So what, is, what does he tell us to do? Love and be faithful. Those are the two laws of the New Testament. Everything hinges on those two laws. Love, 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 and faith. The faith of a little child. So he tells us to be perfect in Matthew 5, 48. He tells us to stop sinning, John 8, 11. And then we understand that it's grace. We've got to study the scripture. Everybody knows it. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. We're not we're saved by grace, not of works. We all know that old saying that you're, you know, you, you, you're not saved by works so any man could boast. But they don't read verse 10. Let's read the whole passage. It says, For by grace you are saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Let me tell you about this gift. It is a gift to know about Jesus. It is a gift to believe that he's the Son of God. Jesus told Matthew, the only reason you know this is because my Father's revealed it to you. It is a gift that you understand the blood of Jesus, the necessity for forgiveness of sins, and that you're drawn to Christ in order to ask him for that. It is a gift. You cannot earn that. You cannot discover that. You cannot find that in a library or any college or book or university in the world. It is a gift free to you and me. That's the saving grace of God. He is the only one that could have died on the cross. He's the only one that could have shed his holy blood for my sins and yours. There is no other way to be saved. And that's a free gift. A free gift. You can't earn it. Either you're predestined by the glorious omniscience of God, foreknowing you ahead of time, and all we're doing is trying to find out if we are one of those elect by obeying, by obeying the faith. We're told, to, we're told to make sure we're one of those elect. Are we making sure we're one of those elect? By the saving grace of God, he's called you. You have an opportunity. I mean, you're going to learn later that you can fail at grace. Coming up soon. So let's continue to read. That's a free gift. He says, for by grace you're saved. You're saved by this free gift. If, if you act upon it, what we're going to find out here. He says, it's not of your works, at least any man should boast. You can't boast and say, hey, I'm saved because I figured it out. No, you're not saved because you figured it out. You're not saved because you're smart enough, wise enough, intelligent enough. You're saved because he opened up your mind and put it in your heart, and now you know through that process. It's a free gift. You can't boast. You can't brag. It's not your works. That's what that's saying. But... Check out verse 10 that they always leave out when it comes to preaching the fullness of this gospel message. Verse 10. We are his workmanship. We were created in Christ Jesus for what? For good works. We were created in Christ Jesus for works. We were created for works. which God has ordained that we should walk in. He has ordained a certain kind of works. God himself ordained these holy works that we should walk in those works. They're God's works. Free gift. He's given us his works to do. You can't do the works of God on your own human effort. You can't. You can't do the works of God on your own ability to figure it out. Through the knowledge of God, through the preaching of true doctrine, then through the faith that comes in, you believe what you hear, and then you act upon it. That's the process of salvation. That's how we're saved. Through the works of God, through the salvation that comes by acting upon that faith, we have to do something. And what we do 
It's not our own efforts. It's not our own. It's, it's not. It's not the exclusive ability of man to save himself. He cannot save himself. We have got to act upon through the faith that was given to us. We've got to act upon that faith and behave according to his works, which he ordained from the foundations of the world. And we have to walk in his works and practice his works and be a doer of his works. And all that is, all that is, is believing, 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 believing. Now that's, that's what it looks like to believe. To believe in Jesus is to obey him. We've got to straighten that out. We've got to straighten that out. Many people are going to go to hell because they do not believe in the Son of God the way He wants you to believe in Him. He wants you to believe in Him because He's given you the grace to obey Him. And, we, and if we don't do that, we're displeasing Him. We're displeasing Him. He says... It's by grace you've been saved. It's a free gift to you, not of yourselves. You couldn't do this on your own. He says, you were created in Christ for these things over here. He's talking about two different kinds of works in this passage, guys. He's talking about the works that you do, me and you, and the works that God has done. This is the saving grace of God. Revelation 2.6 says, says it all. Revelation 2.6, I love this. He's talking to the fourth, fourth church, Thyatira. And he tells them to repent, or else. I like that part. And he says, he that overcomes. You've got to overcome something in your life in order to be saved. You've got to overcome. What is, and we've got to figure out what that is. We've got to overcome. You know what, you know what it is? You know what you've got to do in, in the short Scope of it all. You know what you got to overcome to be saved? Your unbelieving heart and the doubt. Doubting God's word. You've got to overcome that. You've got to overcome that. Disbelieving what Jesus says. You've got to overcome that. We've got to overcome this doubting heart. This unbelief that we have in the body of Christ about what Jesus said and how he told us to live our lives. And the works he said we have to do in order to be saved by his grace. His grace enables us to do these things. It's grace that you save, brothers. He tells, he tells this church, and he that overcomes and keeps my works until the end shall be saved. I'll give him the power over the nations. He that overcomes and keeps my works until the end will be saved. How do we keep his works? He enables you by his grace. You can fail at that grace by not doing what he says. If God gives you a hammer and a nail and some wood and he gives you the book and instructions on how to build something and you don't do it, you're failing. Because he's given you every tool you need to obey him. It's your effort. He wants you to work with him, to cooperate with him and do his will because he's given you everything you need to do it. And if you don't do it, you're failing at that. <laughs> 